Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tennyson E. Stead. I'm a writer, I'm a director, and I'm one of the founders of Eight Sided Films. And today, I would like to talk about anti-Semitism in our upcoming crowdfunded feature, Making the Gamp, and in the series of web videos we produced called Smoking Hollywood. And in particular, I owe every member of our audience right now and every member of our community an explanation and an apology, and I'm about to explain why. Over the course of the last several years, I have developed a character designed to highlight and exhibit all of the problems and all of the lack of accountability that we as an ensemble and that we as a community have come to see in the larger film industry and in Hollywood. And that character's name has been, up until this point, David Allen Rifkin. And today, it was pointed out to me very clearly and very truthfully that David Allen Rifkin is an unmistakably Jewish name and that any attempt to pin the accountability and the blame for Hollywood's failures and for the evils and the greed and the shadiness with which the film industry has conducted itself on the shoulders of an obviously Jewish character creates three essential problems, two of which were pointed out to me, the third of which I've arrived at on my own. I'm going to run through those problems right now. Number one, putting a character on the screen that works in the entertainment industry and that embodies all of these evils and all of these shortcuts that Hollywood has so aggressively pursued absolutely, absolutely fuels the stereotypes and the archetypes that are being pitched to America by the rise of Nazism in this country. There's, there's no way around that. These are the narratives being sold to the American public by Nazis and by white supremacists. And under no circumstances does eight-sided films want to be a part of that. Our mission is to empower our audiences to view one another on more specific terms, outside of stereotype and outside of archetype, and through the lens of looking at one another as human beings. We oppose, to be absolutely clear, we oppose Nazism, we oppose fascism, we oppose exclusion on the basis of heritage, exclusion on the basis of race, we oppose exclusion on the basis of gender or sex or any kind of identity that anybody can find. Ageism, we want people to feel more empowered to engage one another as individuals and to relate to each other in terms of the individual things that we all bring to our conversations with one another and to our interactions with one another and to the pursuits that we undertake as a community. So, Nazis can go fuck themselves and we apologize for anything that we have done to reinforce the stereotypes and the harmful rhetoric that's being put out by those organizations. That's point one. Point two is that to participate in that rhetoric specifically undermines the goal of making the Gamp as a feature film. Our mission with this particular movie is to make the accountability or the lack thereof with which Hollywood has conducted itself and all of the failures of this community, not just with regards to sexual assault, but with regards to our accountability for how we run our business on every level. We want to make our failures in that regard impossible to look away from for the other members of this community. We want people to see this film and to be forced to confront their own participation in these systems of abuse and our failures of accountability. And to offer them the easy out 
of pinning that accountability on a culture or a heritage, even though there's going to be a lot of abuse in this film dished out to people of every culture and every heritage because the systems of abuse are what we're trying to show. To make at the center of this film a character who is unmistakably part of a culture or a heritage that has been systemically blamed for ethical lapses undermines the core message of the film. Not only does it serve the purpose of Nazism, it also makes what we're trying to do with making the camp impossible to achieve. That's point two. Point three, problem three, is the reality that we named this character David Allen Rifkin because that name sounded right to us and to me. I named that character David Allen Rifkin because it sounded right to me. What does that say about the preconceived notions that I hold? And what does that say about the passive anti-Semitic cultural cues that I respond to and the things that I've picked up? What does that say about me that naming this character David Allen Rifkin worked for me so easily? And that's something I need to work on on my own. It's not a community problem, that's a problem for me to wrestle with, but I want to acknowledge it, make sure that it's absolutely clear, and that I'm transparent about it. So, the first two problems, how do we deal with the Nazis, and how do we deal with the goals of making the camp going forward? Number one, we are changing the name of the character. Going forward, I'm going to name this character after myself. Before I was born, my name was always going to be Conrad. So we're naming the character Conrad. My middle name is Ewing, which is a Ellis Island bastardization of McEwen, which is Scottish. This character's name is Conrad Ewing. And the actor playing Conrad Ewing has very generously offered his middle names. Gerard's middle names are John Anthony, so Conrad John Anthony Ewing is going to be this character's name going forward. And uh, so if anybody has any questions about who this character is, if anybody has any questions about what this character represents, I can say with a completely straight face, this character is me. And if this character is me, I know this character is you too. So that's step one. We've used this other name, David Allen Rifkin, in previous uh, webisodes that we've put out in previous blogs. I personally feel compelled to own that history and to acknowledge that we're growing as a company. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a brief paragraph on my understanding of how we have erred and what the intentions of this character are. And I'm gonna make sure that that paragraph is abundantly, obviously displayed on any content where the character of Conrad Ewing is, 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 is out there on the internet. In other words, go to YouTube, make sure that the first thing people see when they look down below the video is this block of text that says, here's what we did wrong, and here's how we're fixing it. And I'm also going to post a link to this video for people to see. And thirdly, I would like to apologize. The reason why this has come to my attention in the first place is because we have hurt valuable members of our community with our portrayal of this character. And while the character is inherently painful, absolutely, and engaging the material that we're creating around this character should feel painful and it should hurt. It shouldn't hurt because people feel like their specific community is being blamed for the evils of an entire industry 
and the systemic lapses that we've undertaken. It is specifically our participation in those systemic lapses that is supposed to catch our attention and supposed to drive our engagement with the material. So to the people who have been hurt by our anti-Semitic portrayal of this character in the past, I apologize. I absolutely apologize. It is my responsibility in the case of this particular character to make sure that these kinds of things don't happen. And I beg your forgiveness. And I think that's all I have to say on the subject. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to contact me. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye.